If you would remain standing and join me on page 880 of your hymnal for the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning. It is such a joy to greet you and welcome you this morning on this cool fall day. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. If you are visiting with us today, I want to extend an especially warm welcome to you. We're so glad that you have chosen to be with us today for this time of worship. We hope that you are blessed and feel the presence of God and the fellowship within this community of faith. I have a couple of announcements to share with you, and while I do that, if you could find the registration pads located in each pew and take a moment to sign in and pass those down to your neighbor so that we have a record of all those in attendance. I do want to encourage everyone to join us for a time of fellowship in Bailey Hall immediately following the service. We'll have coffee and donuts, and I encourage all of you to come over and enjoy that time of fellowship. I do want to let you know that um, we today is our Pledge Sunday, and so most of you should have your pledge cards, received one on the way in or received one in the mail. I do want to encourage you, rather than putting those in the offering plate this morning during the offering, hold those until the close of the service. We'll have some special instruction for presenting those today. I want to remind you all that we will not have a Wednesday night dinner this week. It's Halloween and we have lots of extra activity on the roads and so we want to just be safe this uh, this Wednesday evening. We'll resume our dinners for two Wednesdays in November. Next Sunday afternoon is our fall festival. It's our first ever and we're expecting quite a crowd. I um, I would encourage you to come and be a part of that and just enjoy seeing all the families who are here and present. Be a welcoming, um, joyous space for those who are here. We'll have some food trucks so you can buy a snack and just enjoy that time together. Lastly, I want to share with you that we are participating in Operation Christmas Child. You may have noticed in the breezeway there are red and green shoe boxes. I would encourage you to pick one of those up. There are instructions on the inside of that box, and it's a way for you to uh, choose an age range and a boy or a girl, and then go to the store and fill that shoe box with items that will fit within there. Um, you'll bring that back to the church. 
We'll pass that on to a distribution center, and they'll share those boxes with children throughout the world who may not otherwise receive a Christmas gift. So it's a wonderful way to share the love of Christ this Christmas season. Thank you, and now let us continue in a time of prayer and worship. Uh, the first reading this morning are uh, selected verses from Psalm 34, which can be found on page 480 of the Old Testament in your pew Bible. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be contemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we have come and we have tasted and we have seen that you are good. Today, as we gather in your house, we offer our adoration and thanksgiving for who you are, for your love for each of us, for our salvation, and for the ability that we have to come in and to lift up your name and to worship together. For Lord, you have created us, you have knitted us together, even in our mother's womb, and you have placed us in a place where we can make a difference in the lives of people. Lord, even though we are grateful for all that you have done and who you are, we confess that even with that knowledge, we have failed at times to be obedient to the call upon our lives. We have made mistakes. We have left undone things that we should have done, and we have done things that we should not. So we come in a time of confession, lifting those before you, ever knowing that you are a God who loves us and who hears our confession, a God who is faithful and just, but a God who forgives and remembers our sins no more. And for this, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for our relationship, our time of loving you. Lord, we give you thanks for being a God that hears our prayers and a God that knows our concerns and our needs. Lord, hear us as we come before you and as we know that we're in a world that is bitterly divided over each and every issue, it seems. A world that sees violence nearly every day because of hatred or disagreement. Lord, we pray that you would allow us as we go into the world as your children to be voices of peace, voices of love, and voices of calm in a world that is in distress. And Lord, that you would hear our prayers as we lift up before you our loved ones, our friends, our neighbors, who need a touch of healing, a bit of peace and calm in their life, and those who just need the assurance that you are there and that you love them. And Lord, as we come before you in this day, we give you thanks, again, that we are able to voice our concerns, to voice our adoration, and to offer thanks. And we pray all this today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught his children to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, the children may come forward for the children's gathering. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to have you here today. I have a question for you all. Do you ever do show and tell in school? You do? Do you like, do you like it when your class has show and tell? Then show and tell the baby. A baby and he showed and tell the baby. Oh, that was very interesting. Who can, who can share something else that was super interesting that you can remember? Maybe it was even a few years ago. Something really interesting that somebody sh showed. A shark tooth. A megalodon shark tooth. A megalodon shark tooth. How big was it? Was it kind of big? That's really cool. I would have liked that too. Well, I remember doing show and tell when I was a kid, and I always really liked it when someone would bring in their pet. <laughs> that was always kind of fun when somebody would bring an animal to school and we can all see it, and that was fun. Well, I have one thing I want to show you this morning. This is what it is. Can all of you see that? Can you see what that is? What does that look like? It looks like a fish. Congregation, this is what we have here. It is a type of fish, and it has a very special name. It's called an ichthus. Can you say the word ichthus? Ichthus, that's right. So when the early Christians were trying to live their lives for Jesus, not everybody liked it. And sometimes they were mean to people who were Christians, and so they had to be really cautious about how they shared their faith. And so early Christians, they, um, they would have a dirt road maybe, and they would take their toe and they would put a curve in the sand. And if you can see this, it looks like half of the fish. And if the other person was also a Christian, they would do the other half of the curve and it would make this fish shape or this ichthus shape. And then they knew that they were both believers in Christ and they could share openly about Jesus. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? So this is this has continued to be used as a symbol of our faith today, but that's kind of the early origins of how this came to be. Well, our, our scripture this morning tells us to show Jesus to others and tell others about Jesus. And it's good to know that we can be bold in our faith. We can share Christ with others, right? So in Children's Church today, you're going to make an ichthus just like this. And you can use it. You can put it on your bag. You can put it somewhere special. You can carry it with you to remind yourself to share your faith with 
others. All right. Let us pray together, okay? Dear God, help us to live our lives in a way that shows your love to others. Help us to be bold and willing to share our faith. Share our faith. Amen. 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 If you are third grade and younger, you may go to Children's Church with Miss Amanda. Our scripture reading today can be found in your Pew Bible in the New Testament on page 87 is reading from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 35 through 42. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon, to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, as we come before you, we pray your blessing on this reading of the word. And Lord, we pray that you would lead us as we understand and take in this word and apply it to our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, I'll have to confess to you that this sermon is four months late. This has been the sermon title and the scripture that I have used in my first Sunday at every church I have been a senior pastor of. But we were talking about a different verse, and so I wanted to tie that in. I wouldn't change anything. It just works out really well in this series that we're doing as we go through the concept and the pathway to grow in our faith. It's a, it's a sermon that is it's really all about what witnessing is and what sharing our faith is. It's about telling people to come and to see. If you look at this passage, you, you see the first experiences with Jesus, the Messiah, and his disciples. And when he's walking down the road, John, John the Baptist, who has disciples around him, sees Jesus and says, Behold, the Lamb of God. What he was saying really was the, the person that I've been talking about. If you'll remember me saying, there is one, I am not the one, but there's one who is coming after me of whose sandals I am not worthy to tie. Behold, there he is, the Lamb of God. And so these two disciples in that first experience, they get up and they follow Jesus. And as they're following Jesus down the road, Jesus sees them and he looks at them and he says, what do you want? What do you want? I mean, there are so many places. This is such rich text to know that when we begin to follow Jesus, Jesus at some point asked us, what is it that you want? And they said, we want to know where you're staying. We want to go and we want to be where you are. And Jesus says the very words, come and see. And then once they do and they, they find Jesus there, they go immediately. The first thing they do after their experience is to go and invite others. It's, it's very natural that we say, come and see. And so Andrew goes and gets Peter. And Philip goes and gets Nathaniel in the next verses. And in the verses with Philip speaking to Nathaniel, Nathaniel, you'll remember, says, what good can come out of Galilee? And Philip says, come and see. Come and see. 
other examples we can find throughout the Bible, throughout the New Testament. In just a few chapters over, we see Jesus in his encounter with the woman at the well in chapter 4, and verse 9. And when Jesus is talking to her, she turns and then goes after her experience with Jesus. And she goes and she tells someone, come and see this man who knows everything I ever did. It's a natural response. It is what we do. We evangelize, we witness, we share. And it's really that simple. It is nowhere nearly as intimidating as we think. The word evangelism simply means sharing the good news. Now, I bet some of you have shared the good news this week. It may not be the good news we're talking about in our scripture, but you've shared good news. I've seen probably or heard about somebody in here's grandchildren or children and how wonderful and smart they are. And I know, as I've heard, some of you have the most beautiful and gifted and intelligent grandchildren, and I agree with every one of you. <laughs> I have no grandchildren, which my understanding is they are the dividends paid for not strangling your children. But one day when I have grandchildren, your grandchildren will still be beautiful and smart and second only to mine. And I'll share that good news and I'll show you all the pictures and I'll, I'll tell you all the stories because we share good news. You may have had a good experience on the golf course in the last week and maybe you told somebody what a great score you had. A couple of weeks ago I told a few people that but I have no story to tell this week from the golf course. But sometimes we want to share those things. I heard a month or so ago one of our members had a hole in one. And then yesterday I was on the golf course and I just overheard a conversation. Somebody congratulating. They had heard the story that someone had had a hole in one. And they were talking about that at the golf course yesterday. Or a lot of you like to go out to eat. I found that to be a common thread among Methodists and really most of us. If we get a chance to go out and eat and we have a good meal or there's great ambiance or the service is wonderful, what do we do? We give a witness. We, we tell people how great it was, how much we enjoyed it, how marvelous the food was. And we, we share that story. And as I spoke to you last week, we, we share when we find a sale, don't we? Well, if I find a deal on some clothing and I find, see somebody else, I'm going to say, let me tell you, I'll tell a stranger. I'll be walking out of the store say, look, on the second floor, back in the back in menswear, there's a sale, and you need to know about it. We just can't help ourselves. We want everybody to know the good news. If you've been on a trip, you've probably brought back pictures. I can remember my grandparents going on trips. They went everywhere. And we would gather at their house when they got back, and we would look at slideshows. And we had those carousels and that Kodak, and you, you can hear it, can't you? Can, can you see the dim room? You can hear that, that distinct, I wish I could make that noise, that, that distinctive noise, that carousel clicking over to the next slide and the next. And we watched slides for hours. I never saw a person in any of my grandfather's slides. I saw mountains and trees and birds, but never a, per never a picture of my grandparents somewhere. It was a picture of the beauty there. But we, we watch those slideshows. And so when we've been somewhere, we want to share that. Or when we're going somewhere, we're excited at the church right now because we're going in May to the Journeys of Paul, taking a cruise in the Mediterranean. And the next year, we're taking a trip with the bishop and we're going to the Holy Land. So, so we're excited. And so we want to share that. We are a people of recommendations. How many places, how many websites, how many things do we see and we look at to see what other people's experiences is, are because we know that somebody's going to share the good news and we are people that love to hear that news and share that news and people are invited to join in that's the way Methodism began in Oxford in England the the people who who came and became a part of that first Methodist movement they shared in their personal witness and that's how a movement begins. It begins by word of mouth. If nobody's talking about your restaurant, it's going under. If nobody's talking about your sales, then, then you're going to have a problem. And if nobody is talking about what's going on in your church and in your spiritual life, there's a problem there as well. And this church knows 
how to celebrate. This church knows how to share and knows how to witness because almost every one of you here have been told the good news of this church. Because many of you are, are still here that were a part of the very beginnings. You met in the condominium, you met in the trailer, you met in the first construction of the church and have seen it over the years. And I promise you there are more people here today than were here those first Sundays. And the reason is because you found something good and you saw the good news of what you were doing, what you were beginning, and you went and you told other people. And you told them to come and to see. It is in our nature, it is an insatiable desire in humanity to tell people good news. And in Christianity, it is an insatiable desire for us to tell the greatest news, that we have found the pearl of great price, that this is where like-minded Christians come together to worship and to celebrate our relationship. This is where we come to grow in depth and in our spirit. The greatest good news is our relationship with Jesus Christ. When you came in today, you may have gotten a uh, card like this. Uh, this is, if you didn't, there are plenty on the table in the back. Uh, but this is a grow matrix. I told you last week I was going to put this together for you. And it just simply, I'm just going to talk about one section. But this is a reminder, if you forget, this is how you measure gain, refine, own, and walk. These are our steps through maturity. Gain is the beginning, it is, uh, and, and refine is where we've grown a little bit, and then own, that's where we just take it in and just start to really bloom and grow, and then walk is where we take it out into the world. Now, if you'll remember, I put all of these like prayers. There were four, wrote, regular, real, and revolutionary. Uh, presence is in here, in worship, involved, and inviting. Gifts are random, regular, resolute, and reviving. Service is cornered, concerned, called, and courageous. And today we're going to talk about witness, our last part in this series. And as we talk about witness, I want to tell you, tell you basically how it is that we begin our faith and how we witness at the beginning and how we move to maturity in that. And the whole point of this GROW matrix is to find where you are in each of the categories of prayer, presence, gifts, service, and witness and to challenge yourself and to work to take another step deeper in your journey of faith. So as we look at this in witness, the first place we are in witness is we rarely witness. When we come into the church and we begin our faith walk, we, and once we get over that initial moment maybe, we rarely witness. And, and, and when we do witness, it's initiated by other people. People come up to us and say, well, tell me about your faith. Tell me about your church. And then you have a chance to respond. But as we get deeper in faith, instead of it being only rarely that we share, we are initiating the opportunity to share, and we randomly share. And when I say randomly share, it's because we don't share everywhere. We share in safe places and safe places only. When, when there's the opportunity to share in a group of like-minded people, we'll tell what our church is doing. We'll give a little bit of our witness. And then as we move forward, we regularly share our faith. We are initiating, we are purposefully looking for sharing opportunities to tell people about our faith, to witness to our faith and our beliefs. And then finally, the fourth place, when we're walking that in the world, we are resolved. We are resolved that it is our call, our duty, and our privilege to share Jesus Christ and his message of salvation with the world. So as you're looking at that or thinking about that, you ask yourself, where am I in this, in this matrix? Am I at the very beginning or in the middle somewhere? And then the question is, do I want to continue along the pathway? Do I want to take another step? And the answer should be yes. And so if you do, I'm going to tell you or just kind of walk you through how we can grow in our witness. The first thing we do is we can become friends with people who need to hear the message of salvation. And what that means, a lot of times in the church, people are only friends with other Christians. And I want to tell you, it's okay to be friends with non-Christians. 
You don't want to let them influence you or change you, but it's okay to be friends with those people, to make friends, not in a manipulative way, but because we are Christians and we love others, so we reach out and we make friends. I can remember as I was a youth minister in Swainsboro, Georgia, um, and, and I often find friends on the golf course. I'm, I'm there with them. They're not necessarily church members, and if you want to kill a golf game really quick, you go in there and you make everybody not cuss, and you make sure they know you wear you know, you wear your robe on the, on the golf course and tell everybody to behave. That's a good way to, to find no group to play with. So I just sit there and everybody else tells them that I'm a preacher. But I had this guy in Swainsboro and he didn't go to church, didn't do any of that stuff. Matter of fact, he was, you might call him vile or foul sometimes. When I'd play golf with him every now and then, he'd, when I'd hit a bad shot, he'd say, preacher, you want me to cuss it for you? And uh, I'd say, no, but I, I appreciate the offer. But, you know, we... <laughs> We, we made friends, we, were, we, were, we had a relationship together, and, and I wasn't trying to manipulate him into anything, and I think he appreciated that. But you build that friendship, and it doesn't have to be, it can be outside the church. And once you do that, then you listen. You, you, don't, go, you don't talk to them, you listen. People want to tell their story, and we have two ears and one mouth. So we should listen twice as much as we speak, amen? And so we listen to their story, and we listen to what's going on in their life, not trying to steer or manipulate them into a conversation, but because we care about them, because we love them. And there'll be an opportunity sometime for you to share your story or interject, but that's what we have to do. We have to, we have to build the relationship and then listen. And then thirdly, if you get that chance to tell your story, you got to know your story. If you don't know your story, there's nothing to tell. And it's really simple, it's really easy. You, you've probably seen uh, television law shows or you may know a lawyer. If they put somebody on the stand in a trial, they tell them you need to give a witness. And, and they define it for you. You tell what you have heard, what you have seen, and what you've experienced. And that's exactly the same thing for a Christian. Tell what you've heard about Jesus. Tell what you've seen and how he works in your life. And tell about your experience being a Christian. So, so we, we make a friend, we, we listen, and then we know our story when the opportunity comes and how Jesus has moved in our life. And then fourthly, we're, we offer an invitation. We offer an invitation because at some point we're going to have that opportunity to say, hey, would you come and see what my church does? Would you come and see about my experience in salvation, would you come and see our small group? You get to invite them. And when you invite people, you begin leading them or they're walking down a life of faith and a journey toward the cross. And fifth and final, trust the Spirit. John Wesley was big on provenient grace, justifying grace, and sanctifying grace. That provenient grace is the grace that goes before. It prepares hearts to hear God's call and God's word. And everybody in the world has their heart being prepared. And God gives us the privilege and the opportunity from time to time in the right setting, in the right situation, to speak a good word of the great news of Jesus Christ and have the opportunity to lead people to faith. And we have to know that that spirit is going before us and trust and when the opportunity arises, we need to be prepared to step out and to step into our faith and to share our story and look for those moments. It's, it's unfortunate, but every time you witness, somebody won't drop to their knees and accept Christ right then and there. But everything we do, every opportunity we have makes a difference. That fellow that I played golf with, we built a friendship, never ever came to my church I never served him communion I never did anything with him off the golf course I, I did I was a DD one time and they went on a golf trip and I drove his car home and dropped him off at the house and he came and picked it up the next day two years after I left Swainsboro I got a call from him and he says hey there's a sheriff's golf tournament I want you to come up and be my partner he said I got you covered just come on and and I said, okay. So we, I drove up one day, and as I drove up to the clubhouse, he comes almost running out of the clubhouse. 
and he grabs my hand and says, I'm so glad you're here. He said, I just wanted to tell you, I, want, I wanted you to hear it from me. He said, I accepted Jesus Christ. He said, I used to cuss. I used to drink. I just used to be a nasty individual. I don't do any of that anymore. And I knew you'd want to know. I never said a word that led him to Christ. But he knew where I was. And it was important to him. I made some step, some part of that important to him. And he shared that with me. Sharing our faith is not hard. It's not intimidating. It's not scary. But we have to do it on purpose. We can't accidentally walk into it. And if we're not purposeful in sharing our witness, we pledge our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And if we're not purposeful in sharing the good news, we'll hear the words of the world that says our news isn't that very good at all. And the world is right. Our news isn't very good. It is great. The great news that Jesus Christ has saved us from our sins and has offered us everlasting life. How can you have news that good and not want to share it? This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. At this time, we'll continue our worship as the ushers come forward for the receiving of our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Our holy and gracious God, as we commune with you during this time of worship, we ask that you speak to our hearts and see, help us to see where we might grow in our faith. Help us to see where we might be a better witness for you and for your love. Receive now, God, the gifts that we offer to you and use these gifts for the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Your fortunes they will be restored when you bow before the Lord. But you don't like to lose control now, do ya? The bad we do, we do again. We fail to call a sin a sin. So to our Lord we say. sing to God your songs of joy, the beauty of this world, oh boy, beware its vices or it will subdue ya. Flashy things they bring despair, the world destroys, it does not care, save me Lord, we sing the Has all been said, I'm sure. I come to you, I am impure. I fought it on my own before I knew you. 
I've seen your love, my life or arch, life in Christ, the victory march. Only you can save us, alleluia, 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 alleluia. Your word, O oh Lord, is like a stream, restores our hope. Fills our dream with sins forgiven, we give what is due ya. Praise you, Lord, our God most high. Without your light, we'd never try. So hear our prayer, we lift our alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Like life we do not know your name, but you are Lord and we can never fool you. Your light, it shines in all the world. Our eyes are blind and we haven't heard. Renew our broken spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I give my all and so much more because my life you did restore. Oh, my Lord, I lift my praises to you. Keep me safe where I belong. Above the crowds, I'll lift my song. I'll shout out loud. I'll sing my We are going to do something a little different today as we close our service. Today is our Pledge Sunday, and as Pledge Sunday, I th think it's important for all of us to consider and think about making a step in every area of our life, in our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. But today is a day that we bring in our, our tangible means and our pledge card for the coming year. If you should have get, received one in the mail, you may have mailed it in already, that's okay. Uh, this may not be the day that you can make your pledge and you may mail it in later or you may have brought it with you. No matter whether you bring it with you and drop it in the box that's up here, which you can do, or if you put it in the offering plate or if you want to leave it on the altar rail or mail it in later, I want to close this service with an opportunity for us to come and pray for our church, an opportunity to come and pray for our pledge and what we do. So we're going to close today with the altar rail open. You can come as space is available. And, and as I said, no matter whether you have the card now or do it later or have already done it, I want to give you an opportunity to meet at the altar rail as a family, as a couple. Pray for your church. Pray for the steps that you may take. And pray for 
to the pledge that you will give. And when you're done, if you will quietly, as everybody else is in a, in a state of prayer, if you will just slip out and just hold your conversation if you can till we get over towards Bailey Hall, uh, and then we'll have a time of fellowship there. But that will allow everyone to come to the altar and have a time of prayer. I'm going to release the choir that you don't have to sit up here the whole time. If you all would like to make your way down to the altar, you can do that as well. And we will just close with quiet music. There will be no benediction, no closing. The acolytes will put everything out when it's over. This is just a time to pray. <laughs>